This is Diodes in Briefs. In this video I will introduce you to the two major operation modes of diodes without really getting into the theory or the math that uh, uh, is behind the diodes behavior. Uh, the goal here is to give you enough information on diodes so that you can go into a lab and use diodes in some basic circuits and at least understand uh, qualitatively how they should function. So the two modes that the diode that we say the diode will, we can operate the diode in is uh, the diode operating as a switch, okay, or which in other words it's on or off. Uh, other in other words it's a one-way valve, so it'll allow current to flow one way, so it's on. But if current tries to flow the other way, it blocks the current and withstands uh, negative voltage and there we say it is off. The second mode of operation is diode operating as a voltage sink or uh, as what we might call a regulator. Now the diode is not really uh, you know, behaving in two different ways. It's just that the application, the circuit in which the diode is used, exercises its uh, its voltage current relationship in over different ranges of values and so the diode kind of exhibits um, its character in in different ways so and we will we will see that here so uh, here is a symbol for a diode and uh, there is an, a positive terminal we call that the anode a and the negative terminal cathode C or K and we label the uh, current and the voltage IF and VF F is for forward so we say this is the f IF is the forward current VF is the forward voltage and uh, the diode curve uh, a, a typical diode uh, when it's voltage, its forward voltage is negative, it doesn't conduct any current. Now it conducts a very small amount, but we're talking in the order of nanoamps, sometimes microamps, but usually nanoamps, at least for signal diodes. And when we try to put a positive voltage across the diode, the current takes off very quickly, goes up sharply, and this is an exponential, an exponential function. Okay, so <clears throat> the uh, the slope of that curve actually grows uh, uh, in proportion to the value of the current. So at um, 10 milliamps of forward current, the slope is 10 times greater than the slope of that curve at 1 milliamp. That's what's characteristic of an exponential function like e to the x. Here we have something like e to the vf and it might be over some constant but it, but vf is in the exponent of of our e to the um, e to the vf over um, some constant k. If we zoom out this diode curve looks something like this. And I'm trying to draw this pretty much vertical. It basically looks like a, a, a fallen over L. So what we say is that in this region here, the diode is blocking. Okay, it is off. We say blocking because there's a big voltage you could have, you know, this could be minus 100 volts out here. And there's essentially no current flowing through the diode. So it's, it's off, it's blocking the current. Over in, in this region here, we say it is uh, conducting, or it's on. We also will say this is reverse biased. And here we'll say forward biased. That's part of the reason why we call it the voltage and current VF and IF. So the question is when the diode is on, what is the voltage that is 
uh, across that diode. Well, it is it varies from diode to diode, but as a simple first order rule, for a lot of at least textbook problems, uh, the on voltage is approximately 0.7 volts. And so if we zoom in a little bit here, we will see this curve here where it'll be an L, but it's it's not on the y-axis, it's off by 0.7 volts. Okay, and this would be like the V on of the diode. Okay, so that's the first mode of operation. Where, and what I mean by that is that if the circuit that's using the diode actually is exercising or applying a voltage that swings both negative as well as trying to swing positive, and therefore current through the diode is going from being basically zero when there's a negative voltage to uh, a p potentially large current, that could mean a milliamp, 100 milliamps, amps, then we would say that it, it's that the diode is operating as a switch. Okay, So when the diode is being used in the normal application in which it resides, the circuit where it resides, if the diode is being turned on and off and on and off through the course of the normal operation of the circuit, we would say the diode is being used as a switch. The second use of the diode is where we are using it as a regulator. Notice that once the diode starts conducting in this region here, okay, the V forward, which is this voltage here, is you know, approximately constant. Now it's not, and we will see that uh, it actually uh, it, it actually grows with current. But if you zoom out enough, it looks very much like it. once it turns on, it's got a pretty constant voltage. And that can be put to use. So, for instance, if you have a resistor and a diode connected like this, and we're going to put a battery across it, And let's say this is a one kilo ohm resistor, and let's say we put five volts here. The voltage, first of all, the question is going to be what, what's happening? Is there any current flowing? Is there any I? This would be IF because it's in series with the diode. Is there any IF? And uh, the way that we, we decide that or figure that out is we assume either the diode is on or it's off, and then we solve it. So if we assume that the diode is off, then, um, and so if off, then IF has to be equal to zero. Then VF would have to be equal to what? There's no voltage dropped across the 1K resistor because there's no current, so VF must be equal to 5 volts. Well, that puts you way out. Uh, if I could draw it, if this was, you know, that might be somewhere out, out here. Okay, out over here. Um, which means that is not on the diode curve. A, a diode cannot support that. You won't see that big of a positive voltage on a diode. Long before it would see 5 volts, it's going to turn on. So we made the wrong assumption. The diode can't be off. So if we assume that it's on, then we're going to say, as a first approximation, we're going to say VF is approximately 0.7 volts. Then we can find IF as being 5 volts minus 0.7 volts divided by 1K. Right? It's the voltage that remains across this resistor. And that will be equal to 4.3 milliamps. Now when we plot that, <clears throat> That could be somewhere uh, right up, right up here. Maybe not on this scale. Maybe I'll draw it right up here. Okay, right there. Maybe it's right, right here on that curve. So, in other words, uh, the second assumption, saying that it's on, uh, is a correct assumption because the resulting current 
uh, and voltage do lie on the diode VI curve. So when you're dealing with an element like a diode uh, that has that's not a uh, doesn't have a constant. Uh, I mean, there's a range of values of voltages for which the current is zero, and then you have a range of values where the current has a different relationship to the voltage. You have to assume one state or the other, then solve it and check to see whether your assumption was correct. Now, uh, if we were to increase this voltage from 5 volts, say, to 6 volts, then the current would increase. If this if this diode really did have a VI curve that was just a straight perfect vertical line, then uh, regardless of the current flowing through the diode, we would always have 0.7 volts. So if we increased our battery voltage to 6 volts, we would now have an IF of 6 volts minus 0.7 volts divided by 1K is equal to 5.3 milliamps. Okay, and uh, what what we would conclude would be if that hey if that's the case that's pretty neat because uh, if I needed a 0 0.7 volt uh, voltage source like a reference voltage then I could simply take the output across here and uh, maybe my source this battery maybe I can't control its voltage maybe it goes anywhere from 4 volts up to 6 volts but I really need a stable 0.7 volts because maybe I'm going to use that voltage to do something that requires some precision. Maybe it's a reference voltage against which I have a, a temperature sensor that measures the room temperature and it puts out a voltage that's proportional to the temperature and I need to know when that room temperature reaches some threshold, right? Some temperature. Well, I'm, if I have a precise voltage reference against which I can compare my temperature sensor's output voltage, then I could determine when my room temperature is has reached whatever that threshold temperature is. So a diode can help you do that. Now, in reality, the diode does not put out a constant um, voltage independent of current. It does actually have some positive coefficient of like the voltage will increase with current. It turns out, and the math that we'll see later, uh, and you can look into this, uh, would support, is that when conducting a diode behaves as a voltage source or it's really a sink, if you will. In other words, it's not providing any power. It only absorbs power. Plus a small, resi a, a small, what we call an incremental resistance. In other words, here's our diode. And if it has some forward voltage, this is greater than zero, uh, and it has some forward current that's greater than zero, then this can be approximated at or, or can be approximated uh, about a current IF to be a battery or a voltage source in series with a resistance, we'll say little rd. This little resistance, it turns out, uh, is um, inversely proportional to the current that's going through it. Okay, and this voltage here we'll learn about later, but it is approximately 25 millivolts. It's called the thermal voltage. Okay, so um, what we can, what we'll do, and I'll show you how this works here, is if I draw a diode curve, and let's say that it looks like this, where it's actually 0 0.7 volts at 1 milliamp. Okay. Now this will vary from diode to diode. So it's although we use kind of the rule of thumb 0.7, it's not it's 
it's not exactly 0.7 uh, for at one milliamp for every diode. Uh, that will change some, but we'll use that here. Then we would say that um, if I had a circuit like this, let's connect this. Okay, and let's say that I had. Uh, so we want one milliamp. So we'll say um, 10k here, 10 kilo ohms. So I want. Let's say I put this to 10. 0.7 volts. Okay. Uh, if this voltage here, I'm going to say is 0.7, and it's 0.7 exactly at one milliamp. Uh, notice that if VF is 0.7, then uh, the current, forward current, is the 10.7 volts minus 0.7 divided by 10 kilo ohms, which is one milliamp. Okay. So. If I really had a diode that followed this IV curve, and I put it into this circuit that had a 10K resistor, and I gave it 10.7 volts from a power supply, I would get 10. I would get one milliamp. Okay. Now, what this small signal or some incremental resistance uh, behavior tells me or predicts is that this can be approximated. with this circuit. So I still have my 10.7 volts. I still have the 10K. But now I'm going to replace uh, this diode with a voltage or battery and a resistor RD. Now RD, uh, we saw was, if you believe, We'll derive this later, but if you believe that the, what I give you here, that, that the RD is this 25 millivolts over IF, then we can calculate that the RD is 25 millivolts divided by 1 milliamp, which is 25 ohms. Okay. Now, 1 milliamp is flowing right now, so that means that I have uh, 25 millivolts across this diode here, or this resistor. So I will say that this voltage, since the voltage across the whole diode is the 0.7, this has to be 0.7. So this voltage of this battery here, I call it V capital D, is going to be equal to 0.7 volts minus 25 millivolts. Or in other words, 675 millivolts. Okay, now before you write me off here and say, what in the world are you doing? Uh, let me see if I, can, if I can bring this around here. So let me redraw this one more time. And I'm going to take basically the, turn, the voltage across the diode is what I'm going to call V out right here. Okay, this is what I'm interested in right now. And I have 10K, 10.7 volts, and I have 25 ohms and 0.675 volts. Now the question is, if this 10.7 volts here was going to change on me, with, let's say that I could only control it to be plus or minus 10%. Uh, Okay, so that's roughly plus and minus one volt. How much would VO change by? Well, VO is initially 0.7 volts. We saw that because uh, of this, this diode curve here and this operating point. We were told that at one milliamp, the diode puts out 0.7 volts. So it's going to initially put out 0.7 volts across there. But how will it change uh, in response to that 10.7 changing, uh, increasing and decreasing by by 10%. And what you can show is that, uh, and this right here, this is just a simple DC circuit, right? It's just voltage source, two voltage sources, and two resistors. So you can use voltage division, superposition, that sort of thing. I'm just going to write the result. So um, we're going to find 
that the output voltage will change by 25 over 25 plus 10,000 times, I'll call this delta V, if this is V, uh, Vs, our source, delta Vs. Okay, so what that means is that if this is, says it, say this voltage is 0.7 volts plus or minus 1 volt, that's how much our input voltage changes by, I'm going to call this my delta Vs. Okay, so when you do 25, this is approximately 25 over 10,000, um, Okay, which is about, uh, what is that, about a quarter percent, right? That's 25 out of 10,000 or 2.5 out of 1,000, 0.25 out of 100 times delta Vs, okay? So if uh, delta Vs changes by 1 volt, plus or minus 1 volt, then this is changing by... Um, one f one quarter of a percent of that, so that is plus or minus two and a half millivolts. Now that's plus and minus two and a half millivolts out of seven hundred millivolts, and this is plus or minus three point five percent of the seven hundred millivolts. So in other words. What we have is that if Vs changes by plus or minus 10%, Vo changes by only plus or minus 0.35, sorry that wasn't 3.5%, 0.35%, 0.35%. Okay, so that's significant. It ends up being uh, 1 28th. So um, if we did not have a diode, if we just simply had a resistor divider, like here instead of this, we had a resistor divider to get us our 0.7 volts from our 10.7, then if the voltage source Vs changed by plus or minus 10%, then our output, our 0.7 volt output, would also change by plus or minus 10% because it would just simply be proportional. But, um, and, and certainly we could put a voltage, a battery here. You literally put a battery in this small resistance, but that's a whole lot more work than just taking this, this single device, this diode, putting it in your circuit, and, and observing it to actually behave as though there was a 0.675 volt battery in series with the small resistance. And uh, the beauty of it is actually that if you run this, instead of doing running this at 1 milliamp, if you ran it at uh, 10 milliamps, we would find that the small signal resistance right here was, instead of being 25 ohms, it would be 2.5 ohms. And so we can even have a better regulator uh, by running the whole the diode at a higher current. So that's a, and you notice that in that uh, mode of operation, the diode uh, does not turn on and turn off. We're leaving it on the entire time. Okay, now I should mention one other, no, I shouldn't mention it. I will mention it though. Uh, okay, if you've ever heard of a Zener diode, a Zener diode, this would lead to one other mode of operation. So a Zener diode is a special diode that looks like, the symbol looks like this. They have these little wings on the side here. And it'll have the normal curve of a diode, <clears throat> but if you keep going to more and more negative V forward, at some point, and I'm going to, that means this is not to scale at some very large, well it depends on the design, but at some large negative voltage the diode will actually take a, uh, will, will start conducting in the negative direction. And this here, oops, 
this voltage here is called the Zener voltage. So this could be a third mode of operation, would be the Zener mode. So again, the first mode is when you're operating from here up through here and back down. This would be uh, acting as a switch on and off. Secondly, so this is one. Secondly would be when you operate right at some operating point here and maybe just in a small range around there. That would be, okay, as a source, as a voltage source or sink, really, or regulator. Okay, and this third one, I guess would be when you're operating down here again you're in some you're at some fixed close to some fixed point uh, in other words you're not going on and off uh, sometimes you are actually sometimes you would work um, between between just being off and then uh, this this region out here is called the diode is said to avalanche avalanche at that point it kind of like falls off the cliff if you will and that's the Zener mode we're not going to use a diode in that mode today in fact uh, a normal diode should not be operated out here that actually is a sign of the device failing but there are certain diodes called Zener diodes which actually um, will are designed to be operated out there so again in summary we're going to look at, uh, at least an initial look at diodes, we're going to look at using diodes as a switch and then as a voltage regulator. And so let me, uh, let's go to look at some circuits. Uh, and to help us do that, I have this neat little simulator um, that has been um, created by uh, Falstad. So if you go to uh, FALSTAD.com. They have this neat Java simulator, Java simulator that is not a full spice simulator, but it, it's really nice. It's it's animated, uh, interactive, and so it'll it's good for teaching uh, some circuit concepts. So here you have a diode, and notice there's a voltage source there. It's right now point point oh one volts, but if I increase it, uh, we're going to start seeing a little bit of current. Every time I increase the voltage, it's increasing by uh, 20 millivolts. Notice the current down there, it's 0.2 picoamps. And now it's 0.5. It's, point, it's 1, then 2, then 4, then 8, then 16. So it's almost doubling for every 20 millivolts that I'm increasing across this diode. And by the time that you get up to, um, let's go up a little higher here, we're up to 0.5 volts here. It's 5.8 microamps. At 0.6 volts, it's it's almost a ha it's nearly a half milliamp, and you see very quickly it's it's going into the milliamp, tens of milliamps, and then hundreds of milliamps, and we're just at 0.75 volts. So between you can see why around the 0.7 volt range and just small changes about that, this diode is is really conducting okay now let's look at a couple circuits that use uh, diodes uh, let's look at oh here's here's the IV curve uh, there's a voltage source here that's a triangular voltage source that is being applied across the diode um, and uh, down here on the right is diode current vertical and diode voltage horizontal and you see that um, as a triangular voltage is applied across the diode, it is uh, going between its on-off state and its on state, the on state being when the current takes off vertically. Let's look at a classic circuit that um, uses the diode in the on-off state. This is the half wave, what's called the half wave rectifier. Now on the left here, you see 
so there's two traces uh, if you can see my cursor but the bottom left the green is the sinusoidal voltage being put out by the source and the yellow is the current that is flowing uh, from that source notice that although the voltage is bipolar it's a pure sine wave the current is just a half sine wave and the on the the negative going cycles of the voltage the current from the source is zero and that is because there's a diode in series with it and the diode will not allow uh, current to flow uh, in the negative direction over on the right graph this is the the voltage across the resistor and here we see that uh, the voltage on the resistor only uh, is, is, is only positive, it's never negative, because the current can never flow negative because of the diode. So voltage across the resistor is just R times I. So what we've done, this is called a half-wave rectifier. It takes a fully uh, full sinusoidal voltage and converts it to basically just the, the positive half of the cycle. That's a half-wave rectifier. Now let's look at a full wave rectifier. You imagine a full wave rectifier is going to take uh, both of those cycles, the, the positive and the negative half cycle, and convert them to a positive current through the diode. And that is what you should see here. It takes four diodes to do this. And essentially, during, let's see if I can get Yeah, it's hard to see here. So either, if we if you think of those four diodes as being four quadrants, you either have the first quadrant and the third quadrant. So uh, bottom left and the top right uh, conducting. Or you have the top left and the bottom right conducting, corresponding to whether it's the positive half cycle of the voltage source or the negative half cycle of the voltage source. Notice that the current um, through the voltage source, that is the yellow one, is uh, is positive or is bipolar. And I don't know if you can see this very well, but although the green voltage is purely sinusoidal, the yellow, the current through the source, also looks sinusoidal but has a little band near the zero crossing of the voltage in which the current stays flat. Okay, and the reason for that is if you recall these diodes they won't turn on until they have about 0.7 volts across them. So uh, if I stop this for a minute and grab this here, I'll copy this in. Okay, now if, um, let's say this voltage right here was um, 4 volts, okay, then what we would have is this diode would be on and it would have about 0.7 volts across it, and current would flow down through here, through this resistor, back again, back down here, and then return back. So this diode would be on as well, and that would be 0.7 volts. So the voltage, if this is 4 volts, let's call this ground down here for the moment. This would be 4 volts. This then would be 3.3 volts because it's dropped 0.7 volts, right? If this voltage here is ground, then going back across this diode would mean that this voltage is 0.7 volts positive relative to ground. And so that means this is 0.7 volts. The current through here then would be 3.3 minus 0.7 over 0.1 kilo ohms. So that is 2.6 or 26 milliamps would be the current at that moment. And the voltage across this diode here, and notice I maybe I should label it the proper way. Let's go here plus to minus, that voltage would be 0.7 minus 4 volts, 0.7 
minus 4 volts or minus 3.3 volts and the voltage across this diode would be 0 volts minus 3.3 volts so minus 3.3 volts so both of these diodes are off while the other two are on and so th and the, the converse happens when you have a negative 4 volts or and, and so this will be symmetric for positive and negative voltages now if we if we do this one more time but um, now let's say that this voltage here is um, maybe it's only one volt okay one volt if we assume that this is on then we'd have this turn we would if we're treating this as a diode that's either off when it's less than 0.7 volts across it or it's on when it's 0.7 volts then if we let's start out by assuming it's on okay then we lose 0.7 volts even at the point let's say the current is just starting to flow so maybe it's one nano amp okay so this voltage here is you know 100 nanovolts approximately 0 volts okay that means that if this is ground and we have 0.7 volts across this diode here then this voltage here must be at 0.7 volts and the voltage on this side of the load here because the load voltage is about 0 is still approximately 0.7 volts which means then that this voltage up here because of the 0.7 volt drop of the diode must be approximately 1.4 in other words before the load will conduct any current this source over here has to be at least 1.4 volts and that's why when we go back and look at the waveform uh, on the bottom right here you see that the current has like this zero crossing it does it does this sort of thing where it'll it's flat then it does this then it's flat then it does that and that corresponds to in this region here that corresponds to when vs vs being less than 1.4 volts because the diode bridge will not conduct in now we can do um, we can do something even more interesting with a, a rectifier bridge this is called a rectifier bridge um, and if we add in a capacitor to this circuit we now have so we've put in a capacitor across the load what we see is that um, the voltage over here across the resistor this is on the right is now um, approximately DC I mean it has some ripple on it but it is not going down to zero like it was before and in fact if we if oops if we change the value of this capacitance make it a lot bigger okay notice now that the voltage across this uh, load becomes even smaller I mean even even more steady and so uh, a full bridge rectifier along with a big filter capacitor can convert an AC sinusoidal voltage to a DC voltage that is fairly uh, constant okay now if the so notice this is like 3.54 volts here now it doesn't it's not going to be um, constant in the face of changing this voltage so if we change the the voltage source from being 5 volts to and we just do uh, let's go um, 5 volts to 4 volts 
Okay, now we have the voltages. What did I just do? Let's go back here and open that again. Oh, max voltage. Voltage is four volts. Oh, it's because I have too much. Let's stop this for a moment. Let's reset it. There we go. Okay. This is better. Yeah. So the voltage you see now is 2.55 volts. Okay, across our load. That was when we had a AC voltage of 4 volts. If I change this to 5 volts, can I reset this? Now we're going to see that the voltage goes up to 3.5 volts. So <clears throat> the voltage to our load is, is not nicely regulated. In other words, it changes as the, the, the sinusoidal voltage amplitude changes. But it's a nice, pretty nice DC voltage. Uh, if we wanted to experiment with this further, we could change this resistance value from the 430 ohms to some other value, and we would see that uh, additionally, by changing the load, the, um, the, the voltage is going to change as well. So if I were to um, change this to half the load, uh, let's see if this will do this. Let's do this here. And it, let's bring this back down to something smaller. Okay. So now if we, if you notice the voltage of 3.55 volts for the output on the, across the load, as I change that resistance, uh, the voltage will change some 3.57, but if I decrease it, it's going to start going down. And you see a lot more ripple on it. Okay, so hopefully this has given you some indication of how uh, a, a, a diode can be used. Uh, one, as a switch, as is seen right here in this uh, full bridge rectifier, and then secondly, as a regulator. I guess I haven't demonstrated this as a regulator, so I'm going to pause the video, change the circuit to include a regulation diode in here, and then we'll pick up one last time. I'll show you a single circuit that is taking an AC voltage and producing a nicely regulated uh, DC voltage using an, a second diode uh, as, or diodes as a regulator. Okay, here is a modified full wave rectifier circuit that shows uh, the use of a diode both as an on-off switch, the rectifier bridge, and then secondly as a regulator. So what I have is an AC voltage source, again, that is applied to a four diode bridge rectifier. It is filtered through this cap, but then what I have added is this 100 ohm resistor uh, along with three diodes in series. I could have used one diode, but I put three of them because I was trying to wanted to generate a voltage that was approximately three times 0.7, so about point, about 2.1 volts. And um, I'm when I'm modeling on the right side here is I have a, a one kilo ohm load, and then I have a switch here that uh, I can connect to a an additional load of 200 ohms. So by switching this in and out, I can basically change the load from being just 100, 1,000 ohms to now something less than 200 ohms. And similarly, over here on the left side, I've got another voltage source that when I, uh, that's in series, when I press this switch, I can put it in series. Notice the, um, the trace down below. Um, the top trace, the green, is the voltage across the rectifier bridge going into the rectifier bridge. 
and you'll notice that initially it's a 15 volt uh, amplitude but then as I switch this switch over it then jumps up to 20 so what that allows me to do is to see how this circuit behaves when the input voltage changes from uh, a, ma a maximum amplitude or a sine amplitude of 15 to a sine amplitude of 20 and I can also see how the circuit responds when I change the load from uh, 1 kilo ohm to something less than 200 ohms. So what, what I'm doing here is instead of taking the voltage directly from it directly across the filter capacitor which you can see in the trace below is that the center set of curves okay the green is the voltage and the yellow is the current that's going in to charge it it's it's kind of a, it's a, a pulsating current coming from the rectifier the important thing is if you notice that the voltage of that middle trace there of the cap is uh, reported to be have a maximum amplitude of 18.5 seven volts. So once we rectify uh, the sine wave, we have about a 18.5 volt uh, voltage, which we then use to supply this 100 ohm resistor and then these three diodes in series. That biases up these diodes to, to a current that's actually somewhere on the order of 130, 140 milliamps and uh, the voltage that they then put out is somewhere in the range of, of 0.75 volts. We put three of these in series and results in the voltage being applied to this 1K resistor of about 2.28 volts. So that is my output voltage. So think of this as a power supply that takes a sinusoidal input that I can at this point control between being a 15 to a 20 uh, amplitude uh, signal and then the output is desired to be around a 2.3 volt DC voltage. So here I'm going to change uh, the, uh, the input voltage and what I want you to watch then is you can watch this middle trace, right, the voltage across this capacitor, Let's see if I can get it right there, voltage across that capacitor should jump up. In fact let me uh, turn off the current on here so we see just the voltage I'll turn off the current on this one as well, so we see just the voltage. So I'm going to switch up the voltage. I'm going to switch down the um, the input amplitude, and what you notice is that the voltage across the cap here is going down. Look at that middle trace. So it goes down to, and if I speed this up a little bit, uh, get this going a little faster. Okay, now it's around 13 and at 13.5 uh, volts. Now what is the um, what is the output voltage? It's 2.25 volts. So when I switch the input back up to a 20 volt amplitude the output only goes from 2.25 up to 2.28. So I've increased the, the input voltage by 25% but, uh, is that right, 25, uh, five on, yeah, uh, by 33%, but the output has only changed from 2.25 to 2.28. Furthermore, I can change the load, which when I switch this load in, I'm now significantly increasing the current going to the load, and uh, the voltage across the load has not significantly dropped. it is still around 2.27 volts. And the reason that, that works at the output is because I have this, these three diodes that are operating in, as regulators. They're not switching on and off. You notice the current keeps flowing through them, which is unlike the, diode, the diodes in the bridge. If we go back to this circuit right here, this is precisely what we're leveraging off of uh, in that regulator. It's really it's this circuit here, but with three diodes in series instead of one. And we can model that uh, as a resistor and a battery, as we've done here. When I'm biasing the diode up to around, uh, what was it, 130 milliamps, instead of having those diodes have a, a small resistance, an incremental resistance of 25 ohms like we did here, 
when we had just a milliamp flowing through them, we actually have a resistance that's 125 times less than that, right? If we have 125 milliamps, it'd be 125th of that. So they're very, uh, they have very small incremental resistances, which means that uh, the voltage across those diodes will not change significantly as the current uh, changes through them uh, within some some range okay and the point is that you can see here that the current going through the diodes is a lot higher current than the current that will go out through the load and that's what helps to make this work so this turned out to be longer than I anticipated but uh, hopefully this gives you a sense of two main operation modes for a diode to operate as a switch such as in this rectifier where it blocks current and it blocks voltage uh, and then uh, allows current to flow in the forward direction and then secondly as a regulator or as a pseudo voltage source where it can help to provide a stabilized voltage uh, to, um, to a, a, a downstream circuit. For those of you who are watching this video because of an upcoming lab, um, let me just state that what you're actually going to be building in the lab is precisely this circuit here. I will show you that schematic now. So what we have is a um, is a full bridge rectifier. Let me. Okay, uh, I'm showed you this schematic that has kind of the blocks around it. Here we have the full wave rectifier. It's drawn a little differently, but it's basically these four diodes just as you had seen in uh, the previous circuit. There is a filter capacitor here that uh, is going to uh, store charge and provide uh, a DC rail that's pretty, um, pretty constant. And then here is basically the resistor and the diode, but what we have is several resistors in parallel in series, and that's just because they, uh, they get kind of warm and we want to dissipate the heat. And then instead of putting just one diode or three, as I've simulated in the lab, we're going to actually put, uh, what is that, seven of them in series because we want to generate a voltage that's around five volts or so. And then uh, to further clean up the voltage or make it a little bit uh, more stable yet we add some more capacitance afterwards so in the lab you're going to actually build this up uh, this voltage that you're the sinusoidal voltage that you're applying is a 60 hertz 12 volt rms voltage that will actually come from a an ac transformer that will plug into the the wall outlet and provide you safe voltage so you don't you're not going to get electrocuted or anything and then what you're going to do is you're not so much going to analyze any of the circuit in the lab. That'll be done somewhat through some homework assignments. But instead, you're going to basically measure the performance of this power supply. Uh, just as I did in simulation where I changed the input voltage sinusoidal amplitude and I changed the output load, and, and I at least showed qualitatively that the output voltage uh, across those diodes did not change significantly, you're going to measure that in the lab. You're going to see how well uh, this little power supply performs. You're also in the lab report going to explain the operation of the rectifier bridge. Okay, So although it's a more of a qualitative explanation, it's going to make use of that like assumed state where you say, just like we went through in this uh, lecture just now, that if like the voltage on the AC um, voltage side was not greater than uh, 1.4 volts, then the diodes would not turn on, so everything was off. But if it was greater than 1.4, then the, these two diodes would turn off, and the other ones would be off, or it would turn on, and these other two would be off, or vice versa if it was a negative voltage that was greater in magnitude than 1.4, etc. So you'll you'll have to give that kind of explanation in the lab report. Um, but mostly the lab will consist of building the circuit and then making taking some measurements on it uh, to uh, determine what its performance is.